You're watching Tea and Poetry with Dave Steele, the blind poet. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening. Good, Good afternoon. Good evening to you. Thank you so much. It's great to see you. I feel like while I have spoken to you many, many times this week, still haven't seen you. <laughs> You're looking great. Looking great. I uh, want to uh, wish everyone, whether it's a good afternoon, good evening, or maybe for some of our friends in Australia, a good morning. Um, we do have attendees from Australia that do participate. So a uh, good morning to all our fans in Australia and uh, welcome to Tea and Poetry. It's great to be here. I am Barry Asman. I am one of your hosts together with the one and only Dave Steele, the blind poet, who is coming to us from Manchester United Kingdom. I am coming to you live from Miami, Florida, where I am uh, actually sitting at my desk here at the office this week. Normally, it's a different background. Normally, I'm coming to you, whether it's from a showroom or the proper studio back in uh, Timonium. But today, since the, if you want to call it the meetings, the Zooms, everything has just been going nonstop, I literally have not had an opportunity to uh, transport myself to the uh, usual location, so I apologize. Um, but this is where this is where I am this afternoon. So um, it's great to be here. Over the next hour, we are going to talk everything about sight loss. We're going to hear some incredible poetry. We have a very special guest today, who I'm going to let Dave introduce as well. And it's great to be here. I want to welcome all the regulars who attend week after week after week. Uh, it's great to see everyone, especially Travis out there, Dr. Harrier, Ken from Australia is here. Good morning to you, Ken. Uh, Ron, good to see you as well. Sedona Dave, and the list goes on. And it's also great to see some wonderful new faces. So welcome to TM Poetry. Really excited to be here. And I just want to wrap one last thing up as far as a little housekeeping. Um, there are a couple of ways to connect with us. And like we always say that during this one hour live stream, we encourage, really, we encourage you to connect with us, interact with us. I promise you, I don't bite and definitely Dave does not bite. And we want you to interact. It will be good if you have, if you're shy and you're just uncomfortable, this is a great opportunity to step out of your comfort zone and interact. It will be, uh, I promise you, it will be a great experience for you and you will feel good about it. The way to interact with us is as follows. You can raise your hand, you have a button in, uh, whether you're on a smartphone coming to us on Zoom or a smartphone or a desktop, there is a button that says, raise my hand. When you raise your hand, we will bring you in. That means you wanna join the conversation. Uh, of course, if you only want to come on audio only, that's fine. But if you want to come audio and video, we'd love to uh, have you participate that way as well. And you can also send us a message through Q&A and through the chat, which looks like it is operational. Good to see that it is operational. So thank you, Sedona Dave, for uh, testing it out and making sure we're good to go. Dave, how are you? Do you know what? Same as yourself. It has been an absolutely crazy week. Uh, well, crazy month. October is yeah. everything, isn't it? Really? It's it's blindness awareness month. We have World Sight Day tomorrow. On Friday, we have White Cane Day. I thought we'd already passed it, but there's I, been you know, that you, much you, going on. Okay, you, we have you just, you just, you just made my day, day. Last week. <laughs> it's, it's just been, it's, it's so hard to keep up with all the, all the things that are happening this October. I mean, you know, I've said this before, every day is Blindness Awareness Month in my world because that's kind of what I do every day, trying to support people and raise awareness. But it's been so fun um, and we've had so much going on. It's been radio interviews, um, webinars, you know, loads of stuff kind of happening. Uh, I was doing a film and a TV interview today for, oh my word, look at that as well. Uh -huh. uh, for those people who have no useful vision, Barry is holding up uh, the front cover of the soon to be released children's book, Austin, Austin's Amazing Adventures, which we cannot wait to share with you guys. Um, it's There's so much going on, so much going on. And we're going to kind of touch on it um, as much as we can do with this show. 
Um, I've still been writing poetry. I'm even writing one of the new children's books as we speak uh, for the future. So um, it's constant at the moment, but it's amazing um, seeing the impact that we're having and loads of uh, different organizations and people reaching out as well. I've had some lovely messages. I actually shared a thing on Facebook, um, I think it was yesterday, that came up in my memories um, from uh, a lovely um, young girl uh, and her family in the States who had reached out to me a couple of years ago and it came up, came up in my memories and I shared it, reshared it um, from a family who they have a little girl and um, they read two poems every night uh, from Stand By Me RP, my first book. Um, as a way of helping this little girl understand um, her father's um, low vision and blindness. And, uh, and the, they had a picture of her holding the book in her hand and how, it, how much it means to her that it helps to kind of gain insight. And it just, things like that really, really spur me on. And uh, there's been so much going on like that. And even more to come once we get these new books um, out into the hands of those children that are going to be helped by them. Oh yeah, it's it, it, it is truly exciting times, and I, I want, I'm going to talk on the back end of TM poetry. Poetry. I'm going to talk about where I was on Monday. I had this really unique opportunity, and uh, to me, not just to be in the midst of of, of greatness. Really, yeah. really that, 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 that's that's what it is. But we'll leave that to the end. And Dave, as always, um, you know. I would like for you to continue as always and kick things off with a piece of poetry because after all, it is tea and poetry. I do not yeah. have tea today. I got my water bottle. So um, I'm, I'm going to yeah. kick off with a, with a short piece that was written. Um, I've, I, I wrote this a few days ago, especially for um, Friday for, for White Cane Day. And I just thought I'd, I'd share it with you guys now, but there's going to be more to come on Friday. So keep an eye out for all these kind of new posts and, uh, and things that are going to be shared. But I'm sure a lot of people are going to relate to uh, some of the things I talk about in this. This used to be a thing I felt ashamed of and I feared. This used to be a reason that my pride had disappeared. This used to be a thing that I left folded up at home. This used to be a part of why anxiety had grown. This used to be a symbol of the things I couldn't do. But now it is a reason that my strength each day are new. Yes, now it is a reason I'm no longer a recluse, with every swipe from left to right no longer an excuse. Now it is a symbol of the strength I have in me. I hold it now unfolded. It is my mobility. It used to be a thing I felt ashamed of and I feared, but now I'm proud of my white cane. My fears have disappeared. Fears have disappeared. So... You know, I was having a conversation with a uh, gentleman this morning. We're talking about symbol of strength. And uh, that person is, is on the call. And I won't call him out for that. But uh, we were talking about maybe uh, an alternate version of a mobility cane that had to do with uh, strength. But um, no, truthfully, it, it is a, a symbol of strength. Absolutely. And I know you stand proud of every step that you, you know, take. And, um, you know, we've discussed this over and over again. And I think, you know, as you said, White Cane Day coming up this Friday that we've heard it. We've had, you know, guests here have talked about it as far as the importance of getting O&M training, getting it early on, getting, you know, going, taking that action, taking that first step. Um, because, you know, without O&M training and out the uh, ability to, to use and mobility cane, um, it, it can be very tough um, as people get older. So um, it's, it's important for us, and we've, we've talked about this before, it's important for us to all um, talk about how cane and coming to terms with a cane is a process that we all go through. We all have stages of denying um, and, and, you know, it, it takes time. And I think people need to know that, you know, there's, they're not the only ones that go through this, that it's a natural thing. But it, as you rightly said there, it is a sign of strength to actually seek the things you know, out there to help us live full lives. Uh, and, and the cane is one very, very important part of that. 
Um, so I, I'm looking forward to celebrating White Cane Day on Friday. And I think every day we should celebrate uh, that symbol of uh, independence that we all confidently sw swipe left to right with our heads up high. Two thumbs up from your side. So let's get into it. Okay, um, last week, for those people that were here with Tea and Poetry last week, um, you will have um, enjoyed a fantastic time with uh, our very special guest, my fellow change maker from uh, the Roche campaign, Rachel Gadsden. And as announced last week, um, we have my other um, change, fellow change maker and um, member of my family now, because we, as Baluchi says in the video, it's like being in a, a new family, a, a great family of, of like-minded hearts and minds. And I really can't wait for Baluchi to come on and share his story, his story with you guys. And uh, you're going to love this. So let's, without further ado, let's get him on. Um, and I, I hope Linda's there with him as well. Okay, so Baluchi, all, all the way from London. All the way from London. Uh, just uh, down the block from you, just down the block from Manchester. Oh, well, a couple, <laughs> about three hours. So, uh, Baluji, I am bringing you on now as a panelist, and thank you, Ken, for your feedback. Ken says, excellent opening poem as usual. Okay. Are we Hello. there, Baluji? Hi, can you hear me now? Loud and clear. How are you this Wonderful. evening? Wonderful. Hello, How are you, Baluji? And Dave and Barry and uh, everybody else. It's so lovely to hear your voice. <laughs> Thank you. There you are. Yes, as they were saying, this week has been very, very busy. October has been very, very busy. Same here. Apart from that, we have been also vaccinated booster again. So. Oh wow. Okay. Yes, and that, so, that, that's your third one. This is the booster. Yeah. How are you feeling? Um, I'm I'm okay. Uh, you okay? I'm okay because um, when I came back from long walk i went back to sleep oh and well that's that's the best thing to get a rest linda is a little bit tired so uh -huh. i'm still here i'm still, <laughs> still here that's I'm good so so, so baluji listen I, I i really want um to kind of introduce you and, and uh, to to give you an opportunity to really talk about your background and things like that um for those people that don't know you um can you can you tell them a little bit about yourself and and um, at what age you started to or you lost your sight and uh, and how you um, developed this love and an extreme talent for for everything musical? Yes, uh, my name is Baluji Shriwasta, as you all know now, and I was I was made in India, mm. and when I was eight months old. I lost my sight and this is because of the eye infection and uh, my father could not take me to the doctor because uh, those time there was no way to go uh, apart from bullock carts and something like that and the bullock cart got stuck in the mud and I could not go, not supposed to go probably. As in India, we keep saying God writes everything before it happens. Mm -hmm. So probably God has written that you can't go and you have to lose your sight. So one neighbor came and said to my father, I have uh, cured my eight children and so can I cure him as well? Mm. And father thought, okay, the doctor is in the house, no problem. Yeah. The doctor put lots of medicines in my eyes for three days and put the bandage. And after three days, when she took the bandage away, when I came out, and my mother was only 15 or 16 years old, and she went to this woman and said, look, this has come. And she said, this is rubbish, just throw it away. Oh so my God. I was thrown that time. And after that, uh, the other eye slowly lost everything. So when I was, basically when I was in nine or 10 months old, I just didn't know what to, what to expect, what, what world was like. So I have been, since then, playing cups and plates and uh, make, making music, whatever comes in front of me. 
so what what's what's your kind of earliest memories of of, of doing of you know playing with the cups and plates and and you know banging out those beats and and, and rhythms exactly that was that that is my memory and i used to just play everything and everybody used to uh, say how noisy i was and how <laughs> disturbing i was and well my mother had a harmonium because she used to learn with a famous singer, uh, Indian Bollywood singer who is still famous. He is, he is died, but everybody listens him every every morning. And she tried to teach me harmonium, but I was uh, also uh, being a child, no teach child, just keep moving everywhere, not staying in one place. But that's so my father decided to invite his friend and he taught me some harmonium. And harmonium was very big instrument, so somebody had to uh, pump it and then I had to play something. So that's wow. how I learned. And that was my first instrument. But before that, I used to actually sing all the Bollywood songs uh, and walking, running around, well, running, is, that's too far. Walking also too far because I could not get up from the floor till the age of five. Oh, wow. Yeah, because I was so afraid of getting up. Uh -huh. uh, because I used to think the world is on my, on, on the floor. Everything is on the floor. And at one point when I was about uh, three, three years old, I went uh, crawling and dropped one, uh, what is it called, one big stone mm -hmm. on the crockery. The whole crockery broke. Oh, so God. That, was, that was a very nice sound to me. <laughs> But when, not 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 to the people. When did you then? What age were you when you really started to turn this love for rhythm and music into into perform it? You know, I, I heard you, you you used to did you used to perform like in the street and or, or places outside? I will, I'll come back to that uh, some well in future, but this is a very funny event happened that one just continuing with that so sure. when i broke all these crockery it was very interesting sound and all the, the, the pieces of glass fell everywhere spread everywhere and i was really afraid so i went and hid myself and everybody was looking for me where is he where is he where is he they couldn't find me since 8.30 in the morning. They started searching, searching, searching. Around 2.30 or 3 o'clock in, in the afternoon, my mother was sweeping and she found something under the cot. And that you. was me. That was me. And That's got to be the longest game of hide and seek ever. <laughs> and when 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 they when they brought me out i said it's not me it's not me it's my hands and legs they took me there it's not me it's not me and my That's father fantastic. thought philosophically he thought he has already understood that it's not him it's his hands and his legs and his body wow. he's a very philosophical person don't beat him anything don't do anything to him he understood the god already have so mercy i was safe so that was a funny bit happened. Now I'm coming back to yeah, what they uh, suggested that I I played in the street and I. You well, imitated all the street hawkers. Didn't yes, you? I used to imitate all the street hawkers, and that's how my music life began. And when I was admitted first school, because I could play harmonium, I could sing. Uh, my headmaster wanted me then and there, not like my father wanted after four years, because he went to see how blind people are educated, braille, maths and everything. And uh, so I was 
left alone by my parents without even telling me they just left me because it was 300 miles away from my house oh my god that must have been scary yeah it was very scary for me because i didn't know next moment i no parents nothing no nobody was there so can and you can you remember how you felt then you know how how did you kind of how did you carry on well, just by crying and being beaten by my teachers and... Oh my word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, those days, um, cane was used for two purposes, walking and the beating children. It's a different, a different world to the way things are. I, su I suppose also it's a, it's a cultural thing as well with, with certain countries that are, are kind of like that too. But um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it, it must have been really scary for you at the time. Yeah, so I was just, uh, my mouth has to be closed and nothing say, and even though suffering inside. So that was a bit of traumatic time. D during and those times, when all that was going on, was, was the music that you were playing music, also music, a, th I, yeah, a I therapy was, for you as well? Yeah, it uh, you get so through it because they heard me playing harmonium, they thought I should uh, learn a new instrument. They handed over me Thaisia Koto, which is um, a Japanese instrument, very famous in India as banjo. Okay. And, uh, so I used to play that instrument in the orchestra, in the orchestra blind school. And uh, after six months, I well, we were visited by Queen of Gwalior, and she took me in her lap and. Uh, gave me big mala, big, big um, flower garland, and golden cup. That was my first prize and first golden cup. Wow. Which is still in my school somewhere. Not That's with incredible. me. So I heard um, a story um, when we were working together, um, and, and from, I think actually from a previous video that I'd, I'd seen of yours online, um, where you actually, when you were playing uh, outside, um, you actually played for someone very, very famous without actually realizing who they were. Can you tell us about that? I don't know which one. Was that uh, when we were playing? A, a, miss, a, a Mr. Kate Harrison? Kate. Oh, yes, that, that was not in the street. Uh, I was playing on somebody's birthday. Uh huh. And uh, I was playing and I thought, nobody is going to listen to this Indian classical music. So why not to play some song? So I played. Da, 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 da. Very famous song. And my tabla player got very loud. And I said, Yusuf, why are you playing so loud? Tabla, can't you play sensibly? He said, no, no, you don't know what's happening. Paul McCartney is dancing. And I said, who is that? Because I didn't know that his name was Paul McCartney. Wow. And, and he said, don't you know? He's the richest man. And I said, so what to do with me? <laughs> I'm a musician. I have nothing to do with the richest people. Except, except when they want, they pay me something. That's very good. But apart from that, he said, no, 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 he's from Beatles. And I said, okay, why didn't you tell me that? <laughs> and I, sort of, so, I used to make sure everyone heard that. Paul McCartney, right? From the Beatles, the Paul McCartney. <laughs> <laughs> How long ago was that? What year was that? Do you know? Do you remember? Oh, that was uh, about... 80, 85, 86. Something like that. Wow, okay. Was, so, was, was, was so that I, in London I, already or that was in, in, still in India? No, I was in England. In the... Yeah, I was playing in, in London, but, but did I didn't meet, know anything about it. But you did meet George Harrison in it. Well, the, that was, I think that was the story I was alluding to, the George Harrison. Oh, the Harrison George story. Harrison, okay, that, that was not in the street. That's, that was, I used to work as a musical demonstrator in tourist shops in Agra. Yes. Because Agra, I, I have been very lucky in that sense that Agra being a tourist city, I met a lot of people. And uh, some of them, one, one have, have been decided to bring me to France, and that's how the story goes. But in the shop, I was playing sitar, showing everybody. And somebody comes, 
and takes the guitar and plays with me. And I was very surprised because as soon as he started playing, I played the same notes and same chords and whatever it has happened. And he was amazed. And after that, the shopkeeper asked me, do you know who was that playing with you? And I said, no. He said, it was George Harrison. And same thing, I asked, who is George Harrison? <laughs> and um, amazingly, when I came to London, Ravi Shankar was playing, a sitar player. And after he was playing, I went to visit him in the dressing room. But before going to the visit, people stopped me. No, 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 you can't go because you are not on guest list. So you can't go there. And George Harrison came and he said, if he can't go, nobody else can go. Wow. <laughs> that That's was cool. amazing meeting. And he, rem he remembered me after 10 years. Oh, That's incredible. So listen, I, I, I want to kind of, because there's so much to kind of fit in with you and I want to try and squeeze as much into the time as possible. So I, I've got two questions for you uh, that I, I want you to kind of share with people the answers to. So first of all, um, and we've mentioned already, you know, a few of the instruments that you actually play. Um, can you tell us how many instruments you play now? <clears throat> and the second part to that question, and also, can you can you um, just I don't you know name drop away, um, just mention a few of the artists um, that you've had the pleasure of um, uh, some not the pleasure I imagine <laughs> of working with um, throughout your career. Okay, I play 40, 50, 60 instruments. I don't know how many instruments I play, but mainly I play sitar and sulbahar, which is a bass sitar, dilruba, which is a bow instrument. It's like violin upside down, and it has got sympathetic strings, and each instrument has got about 20, 21 strings at least. Except for the guppy. Except the guppy has got only one string. <laughs> Linda reminds me. And which is uh, just one string, but it produces lots of theatrical sounds, lovely, wonderful sounds. And uh, I have managed to, and I've also played Indian percussion, tabla, pakhawaj, burdangam, uh, dholak, all these instruments. Mm -hmm. Tin whistles. Tin whistles also have played. Harmonium. And if you want to s listen all these instruments, please go to the album called Goddess. Goddess. So I have played all the instruments myself. And, um, and that's Linda available on like started. Apple Music and things like that, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Linda, Linda has also sung, so you can hear yep. all my family. <laughs> and actually, surprisingly, my son, who played something called Tanpura, which is a drone instrument. And his name comes as a main artist on the <laughs> album. He gets the royalty and I get the pleasure. Listen. Oh, <laughs> isn't that always the way of the father? <laughs> You're playing in the background. So yeah, so the second part of the question, can you can you tell us second some of the part, people yes. you've, you've worked with, with? Yeah. So I have worked with... Um, Dave Steele. <laughs> of course, of course, Dave Steele. Yeah, yeah. And little and large. Uh, <laughs> one of those, uh, the Americans won't know who they are. Yeah, uh, uh, we're not talking about programs, are we, at the moment? Uh, no. so we're just talking about the artists I've worked with. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, okay. Linda will remind because I keep forgetting those. Shakira, yes. Shakira. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Boy George. Boy George. Mm -hmm. Annie Lennox. Any Lennox? Um, Massive Attack. Massive Attack. Massive Attack, yeah, great group. Stevie yeah, Wonder. Was, of course, Stevie Wonder. Oh, yes, Stevie Wonder. Of course. Oh, oh um, yes, Stevie Wonder. Doves. Doves, yeah, Doves. Doves. And I, Coldplay. I think Coldplay, I think. Coldplay. Yeah. Coldplay, yes. Um, Oasis. 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 Yeah. yeah. All my favorites. Kaiser Chiefs, yeah. Kaiser Chiefs. And and you you actually got to perform, uh, for, for those people who aren't aware, I'm, I'm sure there will be out there listening, but you, um, we spoke to Rachel last week about her performance at the um, the homecoming for the Paralympians 
um, in, at Wembley in London, but you actually got to do the closing ceremony of the Olympic uh, or Paralympics, the Paralympics yeah, that's, yeah, in that's 2012, 2012, 2012 with Coldplay. And there was about, well, about 80,000 people were in the audience and oh. also television and everything. So millions of people have heard Incredible. me. Incredible. And they have seen me. I have and not I seen feel... anybody of them. <laughs> yeah, well, you don't need to. You just feel it, don't you? And and okay. and also for those people that don't know, I'm sure they can see by you know for the ones who are reading, um, can see your name um, on the uh, on the Zoom list. You are actually an OBE as well, uh, knighted by the Queen. <laughs> it was lovely. It was wonderful experience for me. When can I you can you tell us a little bit about that? How what, that came first, about? first of all, what what is OBE? I don't I don't even know what that is. It's uh, his um, officer. officer of the British, British <laughs> Empire. Ah. Oh, okay, okay. The empire has gone smaller, but it is still great. <laughs> yes. Because it brought you here. Yes. They brought so, me here. And, and that was very good experience for me because I, I went... Uh, I have been to Buckingham Palace in parts before just playing for Prince Charles' birthday and thing, things like that. But I didn't know. It was such a beautiful palace and I went in with a uh, whole family, Linda, uh, my daughter Leela and Ben Shanson who is my son and uh, it was uh, and then I was taken away just to talk to Prince Charles and they could all watch me behind the screen and I could We weren't behind a screen. Oh, we were. Where, where were you? What? There was you like just explained that. Uh, you were in front of all the people in the, um, in the room where the honour was given to you. And Prince Charles put the medal on your chest. Wow. He pinned the medal on you and he spoke to you, didn't he? Yeah, he you? spoke to me about around 10 minutes. That's, that's, that's lovely. His, his first question was, what do you play? <laughs> Sarod? And I said, no, I don't play Sarod, I play sitar. The one so, instrument um, you don't play. Yeah, yeah the one play, instrument that, that would have been the play. answer. What don't I play? <laughs> and he has, he has seen me playing and he met me twice before in on different occasions. You know, these people, they can forget easily. Sitar well, or Sarod. So many people. But at least, he, I said, well, at least you remember the string instrument. That's very good. Yeah. So, and then he says, uh, what about the inner vision? And so, well, you invite well, us and we'll play whenever you want us to play. That, that's exactly what I was just about to move to. Um, the inner visions orchestra. Can you tell everybody about the, your concept and the reasons for kind of bringing the in, inner visions orchestra to, uh, to life? The concept of the inner vision uh, came to me when I was in Gwalior in first blind school at the age of six or seven. And I was playing with, and also the concept of, at the same time, growing independently without anybody's support, I wanted to be, came same time. So that concept came, but it uh, had to take stage when it's supposed to do it. So it happened in London. And luckily what happened in London that when I used to go in taxis, I used to hear different kind of music because London being metropolitan cities as New York is and as lots of other cities are, you can find all kinds of people. And I used to think, wow, what a great opportunity we can have, not only orchestra, orchestra of blind people and blind people from all over the world in one place. Oh. That was, I just felt that everything fell on my lap. So I... Right time. So, yeah, so what happened that I was walking with Linda one day and we were going to an exhibition and uh, Linda said, there is a blind person going on somewhere. I think he's going to the same place. So we thought, okay, we should help him. And his name was Ziad from Lebanon. Mm -hmm. And uh, we met him and we went to the exhibition and he then he took me to his house he played his music on the computer and he played oud and i said well, 
you are very good to play why don't you join our orchestra that imaginary orchestra of inner vision and he said yes babalu how can i go it's such a delicate instrument i can't go out and i said well simple take the instrument take the white can in your hand and tie the instrument in your back one foot forward make some <laughs> follows absolutely and he said wow balu you have suggest me the world's dream it's it's wonderful i can do this now and now he is he is before us wherever we go the whole orchestra is is incredible and the whole orchestra is of the of the uh, mostly blind people they are totally blind people yeah uh huh um uh, yeah and you know i i had the 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 pleasure of working with with all of them and you and obviously rachel on on the uh, the change makers campaign um which launched uh, a couple of weeks ago now and um it, the response it's getting so far is has been incredible from 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 your side can you t- just tell everybody about your involvement in the change makers campaign and and you know your experience uh, of of how it how it all came together it was a wonderful experience to join change makers campaign and as we uh, our orchestra has been playing for a long time since 2008 and uh, actually in the vision of the baluji music foundation established in 2012 so since then we have been playing uh, internationally as well so we have played in india we have played um, well we we i have i have worked in spain and i've worked in lots of places and some people have worked and in indians also came here blind people musicians and came and played so uh, in when the change makers campaign uh, thing came to us and i was very happy to join all the orchestra and i composed music uh, i had uh, to hear dave's poetry first and then the way you read there it was wonderful it was very good but without breath so i said okay let's have some breaks in between yeah we need <laughs> i can play, I can play music the music uh-huh <laughs> so i i just want to elaborate that so the way it worked for the change makers campaign dave wrote the poetry and then you got to hear dave reading the poetry and then that gave you the inspiration to create the performance together with your team correct yeah prior to that we had some meetings and they said well, just compose music and i said i can't compose music unless i hear what is it about so a poetry has to come first so then they went to dev and then they read the poetry and then the poetry was read with breaks as i said and then i could compose some music and i did some music and it, it was it was done luckily for me the musicians are wonderful very good whatever i said they just played and uh, we just did the music then you went to the studio well we went to the studio here and recorded music yeah and it's it's a masterpiece it, it thank you very is. much you're welcome it, it it's it, i think it it opens up so many you know the the whole group in itself you know you know you bring it all together the unique sounds of it and and the way you just like literally match every word i guess with those breaks that they provide you oh, with that's very really sweet yeah, it's just the way that. everything just like it it just flows so beautifully and and oh. just it's spot on i mean it's just that's tremendous that. really really tremendous um, that's with really the art, well, I'm gonna say. ask me to compose more <laughs> <laughs> well we yeah will. absolutely we will. you know and and we are going to be working together again very soon as well Lovely. Yes, yes, in Manchester. In Manchester, in Manchester. Lowry. Yes, yeah. you you're coming up to, to up to Manchester and we're going to be performing together uh, next month and yeah, also month in September as well. Exactly a month today. Oh, is it, it is, isn't it? It's it is month month November today. the 13th, 13th yeah. of November. Oh, wow. I think the 13th of October. Yeah. Will that will that performance be uh broadcast live streaming on the internet? Yes. I'm not I don't no, know. No, we no, have no. to talk to the Lowry about it. Uh, that would be a very good. good idea. A very good idea. Yes. That's a good idea. We'll ask them. 
That would be good. What can you? Yeah, I'm, I'm done. Done. Tea and poetry live from the Lowry, aren't I? Yeah. Is that is that what it comes out on 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 a Wednesday? Yeah. Oh well, no. Sorry, no. It's a month today, isn't it? So it wouldn't necessarily yeah. be a Wednesday. No, would it? right. No. No. But hold on, I'll tell you what. Day. What what type of venue is the Lowry? Can you explain? It's okay. It's 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 a Saturday. <coughs> Lowry was a famous painter. L.S. Lowry. Yes. Yeah. And he painted. Um, matchstick men and matchstick cats and yeah. dogs. He he <laughs> painted the working people of of his area. Mm -hmm. uh, which was Salford and, and Manchester, and he's a kind of iconic figure of bringing the life of his area into art and, and, and was a revered um, artist. Absolutely. And, and the um, art centre has many great artists performing there, so we're very, very are privileged to be putting on an event at the Lowry and yeah. it'll be great to have Dave. Baloo will be playing with a local percussionist, India, very fine Indian percussionist. Tabla from, player. From, tabla player from the area. Uh, so the first half of the concert will be Baloo playing his classical music. Yeah. Torturing everybody. And <laughs> then, <laughs> and then, um, as a light relief afterwards, we'll have um, the second half. Dave will will open the second half with with Baloo, and maybe the whole orchestra will be playing. I don't know. Baloo has to work on this. Yeah, piece. work it out. Yeah, and then the it's a five piece ensemble will be playing, and they will be playing music from Colombia, from Japan. Um, from Lebanon and from India. So there'll be a kind of um, global um, music that they'll be playing together to finish the show. As we often do. Hmm. It's it, it, you know, Baluji, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. I said, the, uh, the, the campaign bringing us together, um, as, you, as you rightly said in the video, and, and for those people that haven't seen uh, or heard the videos yet, um, you know, get onto um, onto my website. The links are all there, or you can go to to Roche's uh, um, YouTube channel, uh, and obviously we can provide links for all those that need well, them. But... As I would say, I'm very privileged to have a big, big family. Absolutely, of visually impaired people, because from uh, since childhood I felt okay. I'm in the family now, and then I went to the second school. I felt again, yeah, my family has increased, and now my family has increased even in London, and in in Paris also. I know some people, good uh, blind musicians actually, and well, so I know everywhere some musicians. And in America, I know Matthew Whitaker. He's a very good pianist, mm -hmm. jazz pianist, and he has played with Stevie Wonder quite a few. He has opened shows for Stevie Wonder. Well, I, I'm hoping we could maybe do a show uh, on the other side of the pond sometime and and, uh, and go to America and perform together. That would be great as well. I would love to do that. I have been to America before, but not with blind people, uh, apart from uh, Matthew Vitica, which is I met in Morocco. Morocco. The Louis mm -hmm. Braille Festival. And yeah. that, uh, that time also I did some kind of event when I, I said, OK, I'm playing notes on the sitar. And you have to tell me what I said. So there are six dots system. And notes were da 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 da. All these notes. And I played those notes. And Matthew, who was 12 years old that time, he came on the stage. And I said, OK, tell me one by one notes. And I, I played those notes. And to cut story short, it was everybody all these blind people who could read braille they said you said i love braille <laughs> just by wow. playing on the some notes it's in the blood they, it's in the blood they deciphered absolutely yeah. that's great well, so listen, we, uh, there are a couple yeah. of questions out there and by the way um if anyone would like to say hello to baluji of course to dave uh please raise your hand anyone has any questions now it's um, time we are 
Yeah, we do have, there are some, uh, school, Cynthia would like to know if tickets are on sale. I'm assuming she's referring to the uh, performance at the Lowry. Um, is there a way for people to purchase tickets who will be in Manchester for that event? Yes, the Lowry have a website and you can get the tickets directly from them. That's L-O-W-R-Y, the Lowry. Yeah, yeah but just Lowry uk. I, I presume so. We can double check tomorrow and, and email it to you just to make sure. But I have... I did look at their website today, and there is a a uh, a place where you can book tickets okay. on where, online. Yes. Now, since I have come with Linda, there's one you can call advantage, you can call disadvantage, is that I don't really work on computer at all because Linda and George and Lindsay and Oscar, four people are working for me. Why should I work? <laughs> well, you're, and, you I'm, are I'm, working. You're busy performing. I'm, I'm just busy performing and it, practicing. Yes. It's the Lowry.com. It's the Lowry.com. I'm on the website right now. Oh, so fantastic. It, oh, good. Yeah, yeah. The Lowry.com. I got a question for you, Bougie. How often do, do you practice every day? Do you, do you play every day? I have to practice every day because if I don't practice, I feel like I have missed my food. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. It's like yeah. I've missed my sleep. Everything right. I miss if I don't practice. So I have to practice every day, at least one hour. One hour. I I don't mind practicing two or three hours, but one hour is minimum. Yeah, if I can do every day, that would be enough. And yeah. I practice exercises. I don't see. That's why I don't want anybody to be there when I practice. Not even Linda. Because when I play, practice, it's so boring for everybody else. Not for me, of course, because I... It's uh, your passion. This is what you yeah, love. Yeah, it's my passion. It's my passion also. The exercise is, is like uh, practicing uh, body, you know, when you, when you are running or when, when you are doing anything, you, you need to practice. Correct. Uh, all yeah. parts of the body. So it's like those, those kind of exercises scales and running uh, on top of sitar is one instrument is not like guitar uh, which is uh, six strings on under you know can be under one finger or you can play six strings with the different fingers no sitar is the up and down the neck so you have practice every very day. long neck very long neck yeah, if, and and you can see well if, if you, it's it's front and center in the production and change makers uh, production in the performance video and it's um, it, it's it sounds amazing I mean mm -hmm. behind it is is just you know I didn't know what to expect when Dave sent me the, re the recording you know originally I, you know at first I'm like okay let me give it some time and, it, and, it, and the build up and it just I love the ups and the downs it, it's <laughs> it, it, I play it all the time and I, I don't play it every day but I do play it quite frequently because it, it just it gives me that uplifting feeling, and <laughs> you've just you just you know the way you've mirrored through your you know music you've mirrored you know Dave's words. It's just it's the hope, the joy, and and you know the, the 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 anxiety at the beginning of the piece into the kind of hope and joy and freedom um, is really is really clearly there, and 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 you know as as Barry well, said you. Thank you, you hit very it. much. Uh, you have made my night as day bright. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I love you, Blue G. I really do. I really do. <laughs> Thank I, you. I, I, I'm so honestly so blessed and and thankful for for this year that we we've got to work together. And uh, I, I'm sure it's going to be um, the start of many, many, many more um, you know projects and performances to come. Absolutely, and I'm looking forward to having you know. Bouja, you together with the orchestra one day to perform here in the United States to do a, a full tour. That would be wonderful. Thank side you. Side by much. side with Dave. I mean, it would be a, a one of a kind opportunity. And yeah. uh, before I disappear, also, I, I'm very thankful to Rachel. Yeah, absolutely. Because, uh, we were a long time before in arts college, I was invited to play, and she painted. And the amazing thing was, she painted the same picture 
what I, what we were we were told in our childhood what is the what is the feeling of that particular piece particular rag which i was playing and that painting is actually came alive uh, when i was playing in france one day under a tree just just like pleasure you know just playing sitar the same rag and the people came to me and said baluji you know one thing that since you are playing these birds on the trees they are so quiet meditating oh wow. play for an, more than an hour or something like that and after that birds started making that sound so, <laughs> yeah like like in india in audience, uh, uh, audience we say wow they they, <laughs> the they, they are... calling for an encore well, <laughs> encore yeah exactly encore. Well, but you I, know didn't, where I... I didn't give them that pleasure. I you didn't get that pleasure. Well, I always well, you know leave them wanting more, Baluji. I always leave them wanting more. Well, <laughs> if you guys want to join me after Tea and Poetry, I'm going to theblindpoet.net and I'm clicking on the Change Makers campaign and I'm going to listen to the performance video. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> share, 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 share. Well, listen, I just want to say a massive thank you, Baluji, for taking the time out of your very busy schedule and day and uh, uh, to come and join us on Tea and Poetry. And I cannot wait um, a month today uh, to be with you on stage at the Lowry. Same here, same here, likewise. Thank you Bluji, very much. It's been a pleasure, Bluji, and I can't wait to meet you in person. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think there's just exciting times. Um, as we said, there's a lot going on, but there's exciting times and a lot of great momentum. Um, and through you, we will forward. meet a lot of Americans in, in, in America as well. Absolutely. 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 So. Thank you. Thank no you, Baluji. Thank, Thank you, Baluji. Thank you. Thank you. you will take care, Linda. Have Thank a wonderful you. evening. Thank you. Lovely, Thank you. lovely. And how I do some namaste like this? Yeah. 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 So uh, just I just want to say, uh, Cynthia just says, Thank you. It's been amazing just to hear from you. And um, super excited. She, I think she said she's going to go ahead and buy tickets. She'll be there. Oh, uh, fantastic. Come and say hello to Baloo afterwards. He, he loves meeting people. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Thank so. you. All right. Take care, Baloo. Dave, are you going to uh, say, a piece of, say a piece of poetry before we go? Yeah. Of course. Yeah, we've got, we've got time to, well, oh my God, is that the time already? Wow. It is. Well, I've got a couple of things to have you not got a couple of things you wanted to kind of go over before i we... do i just uh, bougie you're by the way you're more than welcome to stay on um if if it's too late we understand but uh you know we'll, we'll, we'll let you decide yeah we will listen quietly okay <laughs> <laughs> great thank you thank you um uh, dave i think um actually so i'll have you close out with a piece of poetry um, I just want to say I had the opportunity. First of all, I'm amongst greatness here this afternoon, evening, together with Dave and, and Baluji. It's, it's just truly an honor. Um, I want to say that, you know, I had the opportunity on this past Monday, just a few days ago, I was in Washington, D.C. And I was invited to this event. It was at the uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt Memorial. And this event was held in uh, for really for Eleanor Roosevelt, um, for her in memory of her birthday. Uh, her birthday was on this past uh, Monday, and one of my friends uh, was speaking, and I went down there to show my support and to hear him speak. And it was it was a, a very fascinating event because for myself, being involved in the sight loss community for now seven and a half years, there were a lot of things that. You know, I maybe were in the back of my mind, but I never they never really were front and center. Um, you know, specifically with you know with Eleanor Roosevelt and her relationship with Helen Keller. Um, it's very well documented, and um, you know she was a huge advocate and and a really uh, a key component to um, you know getting things to change as far as you know in this country, as far as in the United States, and I'm sure it had a ripple effect. Um, you know, all around the world. But one of the uh, attendees uh, was a gentleman by the name of Senator Tom Harkin, a U.S. Senator. He's retired. He's from Iowa, the state of Iowa. And what I didn't realize until after, well, shortly after I started Googling, you know, just to see who I'm, who I was speaking with and who I'm hanging out with, right? And Senator Harkin 
is the author and the really, I would say the godfather, if you want to call it, of getting the Americans with the Disabilities Act of 1990 passed through Congress. Yeah. And I was, you know, things, I, I can't stop thinking about this because, you know, all of us here, Bougie, you included, right? You are doing your work through your, your masterpieces, Dave, through your poetry. We're all doing our, you know, we're, do, we're doing our best to, to help, you know, spread the awareness and, and, and share with the world, you know, as far as, you know, sight loss, um, the incredible opportunities as far as you know, living life to the fullest, uh, breaking down barriers. But Senator Harkin, um, to me, is just like, he, he, he's really like, I, I, I was thinking about it, is that what he did to change the lives of so many Americans, whether it's sight loss or other disabilities, what he did was just truly incredible. And you think back how many, how many lives that one individual um, has impacted and changed um, will continue on for generation and generation to come. So it, it, for me, it, it was just incredible experience to have the opportunity to, to speak with him. And the fascinating thing to hear some stories you know, behind the scenes. But the sad thing, what he shared with me was that there were actually people in the U.S. government who wanted to really like put a kibosh and not allow this to pass through in Congress. And um, it, 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 it's frightening when you hear that, that people would actually want to stop people from excelling and, 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 and being, you know, and depriving them of, of their rights. So uh, I just want to just give a, you know, obviously he's not on here, but a, a tremendous shout out uh, tremendous appreciation for Senator Harkin uh, for all the work that he's done uh, for the United States and for the world, because um, it, it really, uh, truly remarkable. Yeah, we need, we need more of that. And uh, we um, do. it's, um, you know, it, it's what we try and do every day is, is make an impact with people and, and genuinely make a difference um, through our message in whatever format that may be. Yeah, and uh, no, thank you. It, it was amazing, and uh, you know, sometimes it's a little difficult to you know adjust our schedules. And this was a last-minute thing, and I said I didn't even know that he was going to be there, and um, it, it was just a, a great surprise. Now, Lisa uh, says that. Let me just take a look at here the comment from Lisa. Lisa says that a must-watch is a documentary called Crip Camp. Uh, Crip Camp, and, it, and she says it goes along with what I'm discussing. So um, I will, uh, I'm going to actually take a look at that as well. Crip Camp, if that's spelled right, C-R-I-P Camp. Uh, we'll take a look at that. And um, I'm sure it's, um, you know, pretty fascinating itself. But one thing also as well, there is a um, statue of, of uh, President Roosevelt at the memorial um, this was a statue that was uh, added uh, later on. Um, Dave, I don't know if you're aware of this, or Bluj, if you're aware of this, but they actually specifically have this particular statue of, of FDR in his wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And there was a gentleman that, that was there also, and he said he, growing up, he never realized that FDR was always in a wheelchair. I mean, obviously, you know, we look back and we learn about it, um, as a young gentleman, so he wasn't around with FDR, but still, you know, to make sure that the statue is done to show that, you know, as a president to be in a wheelchair that he was able to accomplish, um, it, it goes such a, such a great distance. And, uh, you know, I, I just, I, I've been to, you know, DC I've countless you know, amount of times and, and been there and, and just, you know, it was, it was, it was truly one of the, a very memorable experience and, and to, to feel that energy um, specifically for the sight loss community, was it was just really, uh, really very even emotional. I'll, I'll use those words. So, just want to share that with you. Oh, and uh, Lisa says it's on uh, it's on Netflix. Netflix. Yeah, yeah. So I am uh, I I'm gonna have to catch up on that maybe mm -hmm. this week. Absolutely. Rip Camp. I'm gonna definitely take a, take a look at that. I think I'm gonna give everyone a homework assignment. Go out and watch Crip Camp. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Um, also, a home assignment uh, before we kind of wrap things up. Tomorrow, as we as we said, is World Sight Day. Um, World Sight Day tomorrow and White Cane Day on Friday. But for World Sight Day tomorrow, um, for those people who do kind of follow me on social media, 
look out for a, a very special post going out at some point tomorrow uh, that myself and Barry are going to share. Uh, maybe a little bit of a competition um, and, and with, uh, with a very special prize to, uh, to um, celebrate World Sight Day. Um, and we may have that on social media. We may have that on the website as well, theblindpoet.net. But um, I know everyone's going to go over to theblindpoet.net when we finish anyway and check out the Changemaker campaigns. Um, I've, I've got a, a, a special piece of poetry um, to wrap things up. Um, before we do that, Barry, do you want to kind of say thank yous to anyone? I know. Yeah, I, was... I just want to give a, just a tremendous thank you to everyone for always participating, all the regulars, the new faces. Paluji, it's been a, a tremendous honor, even though this is virtual, to be in your midst and to uh, know that you're collaborating, working together with Dave. It means a lot to me personally. And I just want to wish you uh, continued good health and many, many years uh, of collaborating with, with Dave. And uh, it's, it's a truly exciting time. So uh, thank you again. And as always, you can catch these live streams. They are posted on YouTube, the Blind Poet YouTube page. So if you, want, if you miss something, you want to share with someone, uh, specifically maybe this performance or another performance, another live stream, go check it out. They are on YouTube. Share them, spread the word. And when you come back next week, bring a friend, invite someone because uh, we know it goes a long way. And uh, Welcome everyone. Blue Jay, as, as one of our members here, uh, when I say it, and we don't have a, there's no membership, but one of our one of our regulars, Allison, uh, she has coined the phrase as people who, who come to TM Poetry, they're part of the tribe. And so, welcome to the tribe, Blue Jay. Thank you very much. And um, uh, can I drop one even just now? <clears throat> Came to awesome. my mind when you were describing the Washington DC event. I was it, the whole thing picture came in my mind when I was in New York. I came, I went to New York just to make myself known to the whole world. And I didn't know anybody there. And uh, luckily, my friend who is also blind a singer here in London, he had some Sikh friends there. So he told me to go there. And I was 15 days prison, almost prison, with love. <laughs> and they said, you should not go anywhere because in New York, people just uh, are racist and they will murder you. There was this and that. And I said, look, I, I can't stay here. I have come here to make myself famous. And um, so he said, no, 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 we will do, but we don't have time. And I said, nobody has time. So what can I do? And I was, one day, they all left me uh, in the house, and there was a child. And I said, can you give me the taxi number? So the child <laughs> didn't know anything, so he gave me the taxi number. And I got the taxi and went out the first metro and then got the ticket and something like that. And I ended up in Manhattan. And I was just walking. Those that day, so many things happened to me. And uh, somebody said, "Are you Baluji Shrivastava?" I said, oh "My God, in New York." <laughs> in London, some, some somebody says, "Are you Baluji Shrivastava?" And I say, "Yes, I am." We are selling your CDs here. <laughs> <laughs> and we went. I just he took me to his shop, and he gave me a cup of tea, and he played the CDs, and I said. That's, That's lovely. wonderful. And then I was walking uh, again somewhere just just to just walk. And I met Linda's friend. Uh, Dave, what's his name? Arnold. Arnold, yes. And he took me to his uh, office. He was working for uh, um, what is it? Human Rights Commission something. Yeah. So he took me to his office and then from there I rang lots of places, Bhavan in New York and those sort of places. Everybody said, you should talk to us one year before the event and at least one year and we don't have time. We don't have time to talk to you. So to one uh, person I said, can you give me five minutes to talk? Just to say hello, hi. No, 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 we don't have time. We don't have time. It's not, it's not possible, it's not possible. And I said, please give me just one minute to just say hello. And I just want to 
make, uh, give you my card and business card and whatever it is. And so one accepted. And instead of five minutes, he spoke to me 45 minutes. <laughs> and then uh, he introduced me to someone from Lincoln Center, a disability officer, Betty, I remember. And she was on the wheelchair and she gave me her uh, PA to guide me. She was much faster than us because she was on an electric wheelchair. <laughs> and uh, she introduced, she invited me to a restaurant, gave me a lot of food, which is, I, I couldn't imagine that so much food comes in front of me. I can't eat <laughs> just by looking at the, touching at the food for so much. Big and portions anyway, in the United States. I, I had, the, yeah, and I, I, I ate whatever I could eat and after that she invited me to a church uh, gathering where um, after that I was announced that Baluji is going to play some music and I, I, I didn't know anything about it. So I went Dave's to... been that pro before. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and, and then uh, she invited me to Lincoln Center and I played my piece there. That, that was the event I was going to talk to you about. And it was just a picture came to me in my mind when you were talking about New York. So that was my New York event in Lincoln Center. There, there, is, always, there is always good people around the corner when we least expect it. And that's a good thing. Listen, guys, I'd love to get, continue. I could talk to you all night, Baluji, because you're amazing. Um, and I hope you'll come and join us again on another one. I, I do yes. want to wrap up and kind of say goodbye because I know um, it's late for a lot of people here in the UK and obviously yourself. Um, so I want to leave you with this piece of poetry um, that I, I've written especially for, um, for World Sight Day tomorrow. Um, and it's funny, actually, these, these poems kind of come at the right time. Listening to Baluji's story about his early days, a lot of the themes in this, um, I'm sure Baluji will definitely relate to. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I know a lot of people will out there. Um, I've never read this before. Um, I just want to say a big thank you again to everyone who joined us on Tea and Poetry. I hope you come back again and join us, uh, join the tribe next week. Uh, thanks, Barry, once again for hosting with me. Uh, but I'm going to leave you this. Ask yourself this question. Can you be weak yet strong? Some days you feel completely lost, then others you belong. Do you at times feel worthless, then realize your worth? Your spirit slowly dying, then next you feel rebirth. Drowning in anxiety, then sailing through a storm, like nothing ever penetrates this armor you have worn. It's funny how we doubt ourselves, despite all we survive. Our scars are a reminder We've been hurt, but still alive. So when life's unexpected sends you back to your dark place, remember all the battles and the demons you have faced. You're stronger than you realize. You're braver than you think. The words from this blind poet will help you pull back from the brink. Uh, Baruj, I hope he gave you enough breaks there to compose something for that. <laughs> yes, yeah, I will. I will compose. I would like to compose. Please do send me this poetry. Absolutely. Awesome. Listen, thank you once again, guys. And uh, well, we hope to see you all on another team poetry um, next thank week. Thank you, Georgie. Evening. Please do day. send me this poetry with some breaks as well in between. Absolutely. <laughs> you should do an album of poetry with music. Yes. Um, I, I, it's it's been on the cards for a good few years. Uh, we'll, we will talk. I help you lots. Awesome. Lovely. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank Saying you. so long. Have a wonderful evening, and we'll see you next week on TM Poetry. Thank you, Baluji. Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye. Cheers. Take care, Dave. Bye bye. Bye, Linda. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you for watching Tea and Poetry, and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Join us live every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. UK. A big thank you to our sponsors, the Lanny D. Chesapeake Lighthouse and the Low Vision Shop. If you enjoyed Tea and Poetry, please invite a friend, like, share, and subscribe.